Hello, welcome to another day of our doula conference. Sorry, I wasn't available yesterday. I was feeling a little out, so um, today I'm feeling better. And I thought I'd just go ahead and record something about um, just birth doula. So we're going to talk about the birth doula course today. And um, if you're a mom, you might just want to listen in to see, see what, what we offer to doulas. You don't have to become a doula unless you want to. Um, so this is just our video on what what we offer as a as our doula class. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to just go through the... Um, I recently made a new edition. It's called Catholic Doula Fast Track. Um, but you can do it self-paced too. So I'm going to just talk a little bit about the difference between the fast track and the self-paced in this um, video as well. So um, first of all, I'm just going to get to the next screen. So um, our class is based on my book, Comfort and Birth Method. And we have discussions and things like that sprinkled throughout the uh, module. And um, this is our um, kind of what we're overview or introduction. So we have like an introduction area. And we have what's a doula, types of doulas, what's a midwife, more about doulas and videos, um, case study, Philomena, history of childbirth, the timeline assignment, what's a rebozo. So we talk a little bit about rebozos in this class. And a Mexican shawl is what that is. Um, gift of fear of the Lord. So that's our basis of kind of our spiritual side of things. And then letting go of fears and comfort and birth method um, from chapter, some of that's from chapter three in my book. And then we go over certification requirements. So in chapter three is covered in this module on the rest in the next module, but the quiz will wait till module two on that one. So um, we're going to talk about the history of Catholic doula. So know thy history. Well, what are we talking about here? So um, our course was done in 2014 by me and certified doula. And our patroness is St. Jana Mola. She had three children, and then her four children, they discovered a cancerous tumor that was threatening her life and the baby's life. Jana refused abortion by any means that would not save the baby, because there was other procedures that they could do. But she bore her child through the rest of her pregnancy, and they did, I think they did do some kind of surgery to kind of help remove the tumor, but it, um, unfortunately... It didn't help save her life. It only helped save the baby's life. So Deanna, uh, Gianna, um, she died shortly after the birth of her baby girl. And so our official name of our program is St. Gianna Catholic Doula Program. We also have a classroom called St. Zaley Doula School. That's on the Think of It platform. That's just part of our, our kind of our classroom name. So I kind of think of St. Zale as my other patroness of the program because she was a mother of St. Therese and she had children and, you know, I will, I don't have time to talk about all her for, full story right now, but if you know who St. Therese is and you can look up the rest. So um, these are our two patronesses of yes, me of our classes and St. Gianna, especially since she chose a pro-life position. And um, there's something of, of more about our classes at Kowala Mom blog. You can read about that, about how a Catholic doula can support pregnancy. So um, this is more about Catholic doula timeline. You're going to need it for your timeline assignment. So Catholic doula's program's first graduates in 2015. Our postpartum doula course started around 2015, and our first graduate for that was 2016. <clears throat> and the Raven doula course is around the same time, 2015 time right I think was when I started that one. Um, I have extended the Magnificate courses within the last three years on 2020. Um, before that, I did have a different childbirth educator course, but I just kind of decided to rename it under the Magnificate courses. And the Fertility Doula course is under that um, thing as well. And then our newest Magnificate class is Magnificate Holistic Wellness Perinatology Practitioner course. So I'm just launching that class. And um, I also have a mommy latch breastfeeding course and lacto herbalist class that I just launched as well. So I think my um, lacto herbalist may be more my focus for that one. 
but I still have the Mommy Latch class if somebody's interested. <laughs> There's a lot of breastfeeding classes out there, so it's a little harder for me to compete against those. Anyway, so next um, thing. So what, what book do you need? So the Cumberland Birth um, Third Edition, I'll be providing it for sure on PDF, and usually I do include the book option. If you're signing up with the book, it should say so on the online. If for some reason there was a special sale or discount, DP discounted, or maybe you're, uh, you know, you just didn't want the book and wanted to save a few bucks, that's fine. Um, usually I just go ahead and mail out the um, book now to everybody. And I'll use the Amazon drop ship it. It'll be the paperback version. Um, so um, now we have book reviews that are required for the class. So I usually want for the fast track people, I this is some differences between the fast track and self-paced here. So fast track only had to do three book reviews versus self-paced. I want four book reviews. And I usually kind of want a spirituality and pregnancy category. There's a book I wrote called Little Way of Motherhood you can look up. You can always read um, some other ones. There's um, Catholic Mother's Companion or something, I think. I forgot. By Sarah Reinhard. I really like that book. I have read that one before. I used to make it a required reading, but I decided to kind of make it just open to your choice on this one. Um, general pregnancy book. So you could review the comfort and birth method if you want, or maybe you could review um, uh, the birth partner, which is a very popular book. I've used it in the past as a main requirement book. I've just recently updated my book so much that I thought just leaving out the birth partner may, made more sense. The, it's still a good book to read. But I just The birth partner has gone inclusive language. That's why I kind of decided not to re require it. Um, so if you look for an older edition of a birth partner, it's better, to, easier, and to read. Um, I'm not really into inclusive language, so that most recent editions is just not easy. And then we prefer you to have a breastfeeding book for your third book review, um, unless you're co-enrolling in a postpartum doula course or you already have lots of breastfeeding experience then you could choose a pro-life book because the fourth category is a pro-life book for the self pace. So this book is one I kind of recommend. It's Unplanned Grace. And I'm actually thinking about maybe making this book a required book, but for right now it's kind of optional, but I'm I'm seriously thinking about just making this a required reading. Maybe have a discussion time about this book, but for right now, maybe it'll be in the required in the future. <laughs> I don't want to add too much to the um, classes right now, but this is a really good one if you're going to look at um, a pro-life um, version of a book. Because I think it, it talks about the abortion pill reversal and things like that in here. And I do have an eighth module that I made for the bereavement doula class, but I think I'm going to say um, the fast track or the, any of the birth doula classes can also read that extra module as like an extra bonus because I talk a little bit more about the abortion pill reversal and that um, module and I think it should be a one that y'all everybody should read unless you're already taking the breathing class. Um, so requirements for the fast track. So we have discussions. Um, discussions are 100 for our, our live class. Um, we kind of like you to show up if you can. I understand days happen, things happen, that's fine. I I do think it just helps with participation if you can come to the live classes or the Zoom classes. If you're not in the fast track, you don't have to worry about that grading. The grading scale is different on the discussions. They're just uh, 25 points each. And just do at least one discussion per class. Okay, um, sorry, my son walked in here, so I'm going to just turn off the video. Um, assignments and case study. So I have each assignment's 100 points. So at least one assignment per module what would equal 700 points, 600 minimum. Quizzes, 70% are higher in passing. We total all the quizzes up great for your final grade. Um, there may be some more than one quiz in some of the modules, but most of them just have, I think, well, there's probably like a quiz over some of the gifts, gifts of fear, lore, gift of fortitude, you know, things like that. Um, and then there's probably a quiz over like some of the module information. Journaling is 50 points if we have journaling. 
sorry, my son's making noises in here. Skills or other proposal skills. There's 50 cent points per section, which equals 350 points total. Certification assignments are 100 points each, and they're sprinkled throughout the mo um, module. Community project is 400 points, or one birth is 500 points. So if you're going to a birth and you need a temporary certificate, if it just requires to have one, we can make one for you. Um, so fast track um, dual cir circles. Okay. For self pace, we have three dual circles you can attend, and the fast track, we're supposed to be doing six. I have been, I think I had a fast track in February, a dual circle in February. No one showed up, sorry. <laughs> or maybe one person showed up, but um, I would like to know, like, I'm wanting to do is kind of just set a date, a time, whatever. So I was thinking maybe the first Thursday evenings of the month. So um, unless something comes up for for me on that day. So I think something came up this month. So I was, we'll just um, see what day we can do things on. And you'll just, you know, message me if you don't know what that schedule is. Um, So um, I also could do it on Saturdays more easily just for right now because of appointments. So, um. Let me close this door real quick. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk about what's a doula. What's a doula, anyway? Yay, what's a doula? Okay. So, we're going to have you read the first two chapters of my book, Comfort and Birth Method. And so, um, and then there'll be some discussion questions and quizzes. Okay. And less an outline for this section. What's a doula? What's a midwife? Case study. Well, I mean, uh, these are just basically what we already going to work on. You don't have to worry about that too much. Okay, so what's a doula? A doula is a trained professional who helps a woman before, during, and after labor in physical comfort and emotional ways. A doula does not perform any medical procedures. Um, so you can kind of make up your own definition. Sometimes I also say as a, like a life coach or a coach, you're, you're kind of coaching women. So in a way, I, I kind of use the term coach sometimes when I talk to other people. I mean, you kind of have, sometimes you have to have this elevator pitch, like what's a doula? How can you say that in like five seconds to somebody and get them to understand what that is? So um, sometimes I'll say a doula is a, a coach for childbirth who um, does not do anything medical. And she helps women in physical comfort and emotional ways. That could be a shorter, a, another way of saying that. So you're like, come up with whatever elevator pitch you want to come up with when someone's just asking you what to do a lot. Just something that they'll they'll understand what it is in the first few seconds of your talking. Um, and a doula also means servant. So you might want to use the word servant. Maybe a, a doula is a person who serves a mother da 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 you know whatever so um it's kind of how you want to word that um there are three main types of doulas birth doula postpartum doula and bereavement doula we also have fertility doula and childbirth educator but we're just going to kind of focus on these top three for right now so what's a pro-life doula a pro-life doula is what you're training to become so to offer pro-life doula training in all three main categories in the prayer for spiritual emotional helpful way is our mission what we can do as a pro-life deal is help mothers with any pro-life activities, planning their birth, helping with fertility, helping with postpartum phase, and informing them of what a pro-life stance on certain issues. We cannot do as pro-life doulas. We cannot support the process of abortion, attend abortion, drive a client to abortion clinic, or help them obtain an abortion pill. <clears throat> However, we can do instead provide non-judgmental support for any past mistakes of abortion provide a way to find abortion pill reversal information in a timely manner for a client uh-oh sorry hey cats sorry <laughs> got cats in here <laughs> sorry about that okay anyway uh let me here hey stop <laughs> usually my cats don't do that okay all right, so what we do instead, we provide a non judgmental support for any past mistakes of abortion, provide a way to buy, find the abortion pill reversal information in a timely manner for a client. Um, you might be able to seek that from a doctor or a pharmacy. Help a client find a pro life pregnancy resource center, help a client obtain clothes, 
Um, other needs for herself and her baby. Also, a pro-life pregnancy center should have information about pro uh, the abortion pill reversal. It's usually, I think, taking extra progesterone, if I'm not mistaken, but um, that'd be something to look into on how, how to find that. A pro-life doula takes our pro-life doula pledge. So this is a pro-life doula pledge here. Uh, I'm not going to read all this right now. You can just kind of just leave it up for five seconds. Okay. Now, history. So we have a little bit more about history in here. Uh, Dania Raphael coined the term doula in 1960s sometime. What is this? You went out. Come on. Who's in here? Make a noise. Get out of here. You do that, cat. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I am not, I've never had these cats do this before me. Okay, anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so you could kind of read this. And you make Askin was our leading midwife that um, promoted natural childbirth in the 1970s and she's still alive, though she's older. Um, breastfeeding was going downhill and a few men, men, women got together and started La Leche League. Um, when it was founded, it was a great organization. It was actually founded by Catholic members, but um, unfortunately, a lot of Latin League has just gone anti-Catholic and feminist. You know, I've been to some meetings in the past when I had younger children and it was thirst eating, and I just wasn't oppressed. Every time that I went to a meeting, they would mention the, the uh, birth control and things like that. You know, I just didn't feel like it was mom-friendly. So I started the Mom Advocate Breastfeeding Leadership class. So this is kind of like my version of La Leche League. It's just a little different. <laughs> so if you take the Mom Advocate Breastfeeding course, you learn how to kind of start your own um, breastfeeding groups is the um, main thing on that class. Though it does give you a little bit of breastfeeding information in it too. Um, so doula history links. So yeah, these are some links that will help you with the timeline assignment further on in the module. Um, the discussion question is you can read through the history links and tell us one thing you learned on the forum if you want. And it's kind of optional. Some of these, you know, the discussions, I'm not as picky about them. If you're doing the fast track class, especially, you can just kind of skip that. So types of doulas. So we have, you know, birth doula. We do with prenatals and preparation birth and labor and birth time. Uh, bereavement doula helps mothers with miscarriage or infant loss. Postpartum doula helps mothers during postpartum with various tax meals for family. Postpartum doula is there up to six weeks or longer for varying hours. Um, so overnight, things like that. More about the three main types. So I think you can just read some more. I'm not going to read everything on every slide because I just I wanted to do this video real quick. So you can come back and read it later when you're um, doing the actual course. Uh, this is a little bit more about the Magnificate classes. You can um, read that later as well. So I'm just going to go to the midwife section. So um, the reason I talk about midwifery is because a lot of doulas do become a doula first, and then they become a midwife. And I also, I want to make sure you understand what the difference is. So a midwife means, the word means with woman. And midwife stays with a woman during labor and rarely leaves except bathroom breaks. And there are different types of midwives. And a midwife also, you know, helps does more of the medical side of things. So I should have put that on here. I don't know why I didn't. Okay, so <laughs> she, midwife does middle, wife does medical side of birth. And this is just a little short story about one time when I was in labor and some student said the baby's gender or something my husband he wasn't really happy about that <laughs> okay anyway there's just you know sometimes you have the need different needs for the new wife i also had a home birth and um i was using oxygen with the home birth so this is just some more about what the new wives do um, i'm just thinking i'm just gonna let y'all read that but the main difference between a midwife and a doula is that a midwife is going to be performing medical tasks. She's going to be delivering babies. She's going to have to know how to resuscitate a baby. So she's going to have to know a lot more information. And she's going to have to have four to six years of study. It might even take longer. 
um, some midwifery schools and certain states require the MAHC school, which is like the university. So you're going to be spending, yeah, 10K or more. I mean, you could be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars just on midwifery school. Um, and then you would pass their exams. Um, there's also the NARM exam, which is the National Registry of Midwives um, exam. Most midwives do that, uh, but there's a few states you really wouldn't have to do that in. It's just kind of more complimentary on a couple of states that most of the states are probably going to require those exams and things like that. So midwifery education is not cheap. It's expensive. So when you're getting into midwifery, you're going to have to look at the costs and see if that's something you really want to continue doing. I have studied midwifery on and off throughout my life. I got up, uh, was in midwife with to be, midwife to be, which she's one of the lower cost ones. But um, I just felt like it was more like a midwife assistant program. It's it's probably just not enough to um really call yourself a midwife. But um, it's a good starting point if somebody wanted to do it. Um, there is also other schools. I I I've been enrolled in a more one, so um. I just decided that doula work was just meant my calling. So I decided not to continue with uh, studying that. So doulas are just more helping with the pregnancy care, labor, postpartum care in a non-medical way. We just help mothers be informed. We help them with birth planning. We help them with comfort measures during birth. A doula training easily, um, I don't know why I put by 450 because the class, the cost of doulas I'm going to say 700 and up. Well, my courses are a little less pricey. But if you go look at other places online, they're all starting around the $700 figures mostly now. So um, if you think about it, my classes starting at 500 or 550 or whatever, they're not that um, bad on price if you compare prices. And I usually do sales all the time. So um good price for a doula course so um these are some videos about doulas and just benefits about um doulas i might just show one i think i like the daily dash one let's see if i can open that one i just give myself a break of re it's awesome. that sucks okay sorry it sucks. okay it's not Sorry. The longest Sorry. Stupid, stupid commercials. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. No, I'll listen to this for a minute. Hey, everyone, and welcome to The Daily Dish. I'm your host, Kathy Rankin, and we have a special guest with us today. Her name is Kelly Sunshine, and yes, that is her real name, and it's fitting because she's a doula, and now, first of all, Kelly, there's a lot of people who don't know what a doula is, so can you explain for our viewers what it is and how you got into this whole um, idea of helping women and fathers through the birthing process? Absolutely. So a doula is... Um, another word for a labor coach. Um, it's a Greek term, and it um, basically just is someone who is hired by a couple to help them through the process um, before, during, and after childbirth. Okay, so it's not just for labor, but I mean, they're starting with you. How, how early into the pregnancy would a doula become involved with the couple? Um, it really depends on the, the mom. So I have some clients that will seek me out as early as eight weeks pregnant, um, but for the majority, they'll look for someone around 30 weeks, 30, 30 weeks. So what is the difference between, because we hear a lot about midwives, what is the actual difference between a midwife and a doula? So the difference is a midwife has some significant more medical training and they actually can do the deliveries, whereas a doula um, is more hands-off in the delivery area of, of the birth. So what would you say the main purpose then is for the doula to be part of the whole process with the husband and the wife? We get much more intimate with our clients as far as helping them physically, emotionally, and mentally give birth. We're there to give them support, information, so that they can make an informed decision when a decision needs to be made as to, you know, a path that they need to take depending on what's going on with their birth. Um, 
we're there to help the mom get through all of the physical part of it as far as paying and just managing that and um, allowing the dad to be there to physically support his wife and not feel like he has to have all the information and all the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So how did you, I'm just curious, how did you get into this as a, as a career or as something that you, know, you do for a living? Well, I've always had an incredible passion for work. And I thought when I was younger that I would go on and become a labor delivery nurse. And um, I have four of my own kids. And so it just timing wise didn't fit out for me to go back to school. And I've um, researched and looked into really what doulas do. And that's where my heart is. I want to be able to give patients the care and the moms the care that um, they really need to get through the work that they want. So, okay, I'm just going to stop in there. I kind of alone thing and I don't want to sit here for the whole four minutes. Anyway, so that's kind of a little bit more about doula work. Um, so now we have a case study. And sometimes the case studies will be kind of in can't see that right in the in with the module, but this one I just made it separate so we can understand it. The case study is kind of a real or made up scenario. And this one is kind of made up something um and it's just giving you a chance to do some research. Some of the um, things you'll research will count towards your certification requirement. Um, like we have resource lists that you're going to come up with. So this is kind of part of your resource um, list. Philomena is a college student. She thought she was pregnant. So she went to the clinic on campus. They said she had a positive test. They recommend she board the baby and call the blob. She comes out running out of the clinic, right smack into you. You ask her why she's crying and find out what's happening. You get her to calm down and you offer to help. What are three resources you can find for family in your area, the world, city, state that would help her get keep her baby and get clothing or housing for her and her baby? You may list more than three if so desired. Uh, and you may finish this scenario if you want or just leave that part out. So we're just basically looking for three resources. Um, some people have not given me, like, they give me just a name. Uh, if you can... Give me a name, address, phone number for the resource. It just helps you later when you're having um, a client ask you, you'll be able to look at that resource and you'll actually be able to have the phone number and address to give your client. So um, anyway, that's our case study for this module. And well, if we have more than one case study, we may have uh, like options where you can choose more than one or there's some times where I just have one one that I want y'all to do just for practice. So history of childbirth um, timeline assignment. So this is where we get to um, make a history of uh, kind of a history timeline thing. Now, I think I have an example on my website. So let's see if I can, let's go back over here. I'll see if I can find the website. Um, if I could do the log. I have some, I know I have some, First do uh okay, first student work. Okay, so if you go to this first student work page, here's some examples of timeline. So somebody did it like this, somebody did it like this, going that direction. Um Amberly did it this way. Um, there's another one. And we use, usually want you to end with like what day you started the Catholic Bill program, something like that. If you want to add in some Information about like Catholic duel started in 2014 or something, you could put it somewhere on there as well. And this is a vision board assignment that somebody else did. So there's just some kind of fun things you can look at. And then these are just quick requirements kind of thing. Okay, so that's just showing you that page. Now um me go back over here. I'm hoping to finish this quickly. Okay, so that's Basically, how you do the timeline. I'm not going to read the rest of that. Okay, Rizzozo! Yay! I like the Rizzozo. So, the Mexican shawl is one of my favorite tools for birth. I don't think I have one in this room right now. <laughs> That's my favorite thing, but I have one here. Okay, anyway, but um, we will do like a level A workshop together, maybe even a level B, just depending on the B is kind of optional. I'm not sure. Uh, level A for sure we will do together as a group in any of the classes. 
and um, sometimes I'll let you in level B if we're doing it with other paid people. Like if I'm inviting other people in and they come, then you get level B too. Um, for right now, I'm just saying level A is included for sure. Unless you ask, if you sign up for like my mentoring package, I'll throw in level B for sure as well. I have extra packages you can get. So um, Tinder Sleep Rebozo is one of my favorite ones where you just kind of jiggle the Rebozo over the mother and you help help her kind of sleep. And these are just some like a picture of what that looks like. So I just do one. I'm just showing you one technique in this um, module. But there'll be other techniques that we'll learn. Oh, actually, I guess there's two techniques in here. I'm sorry. There's hideaway Rebozo too. So anyway, you can read that later when you're part of the course. So the next section is the comfort birth method and the gift of fear of the Lord. So we're just reading more from comfort birth. We're reading chapter three now, or at least part of chapter three. Um, there is a case study, Isabel. That's kind of, you know, I don't want to overwhelm people. So that's kind of optional. If you want to do it and submit it over email, that's fine. If not, and you're like, I am too bogged down. This is too many assignments. Fine. Don't you can skip that one in the book. Okay. Because I don't want anybody to feel overwhelmed because of this class. Now, get the fear of the Lord, and that's our next section here. So a lot of women are scared of doula being a, going into birth and just fearful delivery, labor and delivery. So um, this technique um, where we just were just letting go and giving it to God, our, our fears and our just having this and I'm really the true meaning of get to fear is that we're loving God more or a desire not to offend him and that's kind of this filial fear it's not like the fear of being afraid it's a different kind of fear um this gift enables holy souls to acknowledge their nothingness before God so this sounds a lot like Saint Therese and her little ways if you think about her um this would be um very much her gift of fear so what does this gift of fear have to do with doula work? So we're helping mothers just kind of get unstuck from being afraid of labor and pain and letting their, you know, kind of this pain is life giving pain, you know, just trying to get her getting over that fear of pain. Um, you know, that pain's gonna go away as soon as the baby's born. It's it's just there temporarily. So um this could be a discussion question on the gift of fear. So this letting go of exercise uh, is kind of something I've made up, and I kind of think I got some of the ideas from another place somewhere. I don't remember now. Somewhere along the way, I got the idea. So um, you have the mother kind of sit quietly on her chair and have her breathe and in and out, and just kind of have her relax. And then you could ask her what she's afraid about or fearful about or anxiety about her upcoming birth. Let's just say this mother is afraid of having a needle in her back or drugs she just wants to avoid that as much as possible then she can write that down and just let it go and she can even turn can pair, tear up that piece of paper or burn it however she wants to get rid of that paper now she can think of one thing that might help her with that anxiety maybe just having a doula there having her her partner there her husband there um maybe praying the rosary with you you know maybe that might, might be something that she or maybe an affirmation, you can do it, kind of, you can do this without any um, needles, you can do this on your own, that kind of thing. Just have her think of something that would help her relax and let go. So she can do some more breathing again, and then she can come back to the present moment, kind of just come out of that kind of meditative kind of state there. And she can do this more than one time. She doesn't have, you know, once was not enough to help her let go of her fear, um, you know, suggest that she does this with her husband or uh, our friends to help her um, let go, you know, continuing that through her pregnancy journey. And so now we talk about St. Gerard in our class. We have a little bit of story about him. He was falsely accused of wrongdoing. Um, so he took, he never really defended himself, but later on he was um, actually restored to what he was, they found out there was a false accusation. Um, but also, he gave a hanky to a woman. We, it might have been that that same woman, and we don't know exactly who she, he gave a hanky to. But um, he gave a hanky to somebody, 
and she was having bad labor pains, and she she brought out the hanky, put it on her belly, uh, and asked for St. Gerard's help, and the baby came fast and was fine. So this is one of the reasons uh, St. Gerard, Gerard is known as a patron of pregnancy. So uh, the mothersaint.org is a good place to get um to become a, a member of his league. They'll send you a certificate and a couple of free things. There's also a place to get the um Gerard Hanky. There's a couple websites that say they have it. I have not tried getting one. So I would suggest you um just contact them. There's one called St. Gerard.com or St. Lucy.net slash um with the St. Gerard on there. I think that one's probably the more reliable one because actually the phone number, I've never tried calling them. Um, email might be more better. You never know, phone numbers are still good. But anyway, I would try contacting this and see if you get a hanky if you want, you know, if you want to. They may want a donation. And then there's a longer biography of St. Gerard there. And then I added a checklist of assignments. I forgot to put this in the first version of this class. So I decided to put it in here. Um, turn in the pro-life pledge, you know, some different things in here. The case study. This is the case study, Elmina. Elmina resources. So that's the resource one. Um, I do have makeup flyer about what a doula is, but that's kind of optional for this. If you want to do it, I, I usually have it for the self-paced students to do. But if you're a fast track student, I can let you kind of slide on that one if you want. But it is good to just have it just in case you have a client or somebody asking you about it. So it's up to you if you want to think about it and do it maybe later when you're doing your um, contracts and things like that. That's okay as well. I know a lot of people are like, well, I'm just starting out. I don't want to think about a dual business name yet or anything like that. And then some people like they have a business name. They want to go and get into having... You know, if you want to do that, that's fine. If you want to think of a business name um, first and then come back to that assignment, that's fine with me. I'm, I'm kind of leaving that one optional for fast track. Timeline assignment, practice proposal skills with a friend, letting go of fears assignment. And the proposal stuff, you know, we can wait and do some of that when we're doing the level A class. I just wanted to include some of the proposal in with the modules a little bit more um, because the uh, level A is a separate kind of model class and I wanted to throw in a little bit extra just to have it here in the course. Okay, now certification requirements. So um we had the three book reviews. We want you to make a birth plan for mother. I this is kind of new. I don't think I had that in the past. There's probably something in one of the case studies or a, a class assignment possibly. So um if you were Kind of make a note of that assignment if I can find it and I'll star it or something for you on that. Make a birth doula contract. So you would make a birth doula contract. That's more in model six. Go to labor and delivery hospital tour or visit a birth movie center if you can. If for some reason I'm just not able to get kids, that's fine. Instead, I would want you to just find out if there's any restrictions now for doulas if, if you can't go on a tour. Um, you know, there might be a possibility to go on a virtual tour as well. Maybe you can find out if your hospital has something like that um, or, you know, whatever the reason. I think it's just a good idea to know what your local hospital or birth center looks like that you probably most likely going to work at. As a doula, if you don't have time for that, that's fine. I, I'm kind of making this an optional assignment for a fast track because I know or anybody that has kids and they're just like, oh, well, I don't think I can do that. Well, then find out the, the restrictions then. That would be the, the the part that we at least do this part of it. That way you know before you go into the hospital, oh, I can bring, I can be in there and the husband can be in there and somebody else can be in there, you know, whatever restrictions they might have in the hospital rooms now. Um, I think they're probably lessening restrictions now. I wrote, kind of wrote this, uh, some of this stuff back in 2020 when all that stuff was going on. And now it's kind of like, okay, it's, we're easing up. It's 2024 now. Um, skills. Um, we all have skills assignments for the, the proposal stuff. Don't worry about it too much until we do the, the level A workshop. 
still, I mean, it's kind of optional to do the skills right now, unless you want to just get ahead on that. Uh, community project. Um, part of that is I'm making a 10 resource list. And then terms and definitions, an intervening three mothers, and a 10 lease, one birth as a fast tracker, or three births if you're in one of the Medicaid states that we cover um, for Medicaid. And we're, I found out for Arizona, I am a cultural and continuing education at this moment. But I may be applying for the other one if I can do an in-person workshop. So I am hoping to do some in-person workshops. So if you're interested, like, oh, I think I'd really like to come to an in-person workshop to have the, the proposal skills and some of the other hands-on couple of measure skills um, with me, then, um, you know, message me. Let me know you're interested in that. And thinking about doing is having it like twice a year. And um kind of in my location area somewhere, maybe Wichita or Manhattan or someplace, someplace that, that I can get to. It's not too hard to get to. Um, I would just have to have a few interested students. I would charge a workshop fee. Sorry, I just have to charge something. I'm not going to be able to do it for free, <laughs> but it would be something you could add on and um, maybe I could give you some continuing education units. Maybe if you're a uh, part of Donna, maybe we could find a way to get it to count for, you know, if you're a you know, with another dual course too, we could see if we can get that to count for something as well. Um, and this, this is kind of the community project. So at least the 10 resource list of the bird interviews will count for this community project. The other stuff is kind of extra stuff. If you're attending a birth already, then really that's probably all you need to do. Attend the birth as observer is kind of like this Arizona thing. And since I am not officially fully with Arizona yet. We're just the culture and continuing education right now. This is optional for right now, anybody, unless you're just interested in doing it like that. So we're just going to kind of end this right now on what we're covering. So that's the end of module one. So um, it's got about 50, uh, 48 actual pages and then extra for certification requirements here. Um, so that's module one. Um, some of the modules are a little longer than this. Sorry, I just, it's just the way it is. I have, the module three is probably the longest because we have a lot to cover in module three. So I'm just going to go ahead and quit this um, video right now. Thank you for attending the um, workshop today for the birth doula to just learn a little bit more about what, what the class is like. Again, the if you're still like, I still don't quite understand all of this or whatever, if you have a question, um, email me at catholicdoulaprogram at gmail.com. But basically, I just went through the first module of what we cover in our classes. And there's seven modules, um, main modules. I, I think I'm still working on the healing arts one, which is kind of extra credit. I'm not requiring the healing arts to be a full credit. Um, there's a section in my book, called Healing Arts, so I wanted to kind of make a module separate for that, but um, you can do the class without it. It's just Healing Arts will probably be incorporated if we do a workshop as well. If somebody's interested in an in-person workshop, we're going to cover some of the Healing Arts in that as well. Um, so thank you for coming. If you're interested in being a doula, the conference has a special deal. So if you want to go to the birth shop page, catholicdoula.com slash birth shop, or I know, I think it's just called slash shop, shop, slash shop based HTML, and you can see the specials for the um, conference specials. Um, if you're watching this later, then we'll actually just look and see their website and see if we have any specials going on. Thank you.